Good morning. In this uh, video, we are going to talk about electronic distance measurement. Uh, this electronic distance measurement studies on electronic distance measurements are based on uh, survey. And uh, with electronic distance measurement, we can also do what you call intersection and resection. Uh, there, of course, there are devices which help us do that. Now, uh, as far as electronic distance measurement is concerned, uh, let us understand how things work. So, let us understand first that there is an electromagnetic radiation, and then the electromagnetic radiation has to travel through the atmosphere and hit the target, and then it has to reflect back and go to where the thing uh, was started. Okay, so now you see that the time of flight, so you have the source here, and the light comes here hits and goes back so there is what we call as a time of flight now you know that the speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second so you multiply that with the time and you will find out the distance but you see that the light has traveled twice the distance so therefore you have to divide the product by 2 so this is all about distance measurement now is this is how the distance measurement thing works but finding out so but usually people are doing electronic distance measurement for finding out uh, the coordinates now how does that work so let us uh, take the help of a prop so imagine that this is the source this is the for this is the source here with the known coordinate and this is the target with the unknown coordinate so now you remember that uh, when you have got the coordinates that are x y and z and this unknown coordinate here it will be again another unknown x y and z so therefore there are three unknowns okay so now three unknowns will require three equations to solve so how do i get or how do i get those three equations so therefore what are, what we are going to do is uh, in a in a in a special device like total station what happens is the total station is able to measure uh, apart from this horizontal distance i told you how to how this horizontal distance is measured the uh, the instrument throws a light beam in this direction and the light beam reflects we calculate the time and we multiply the speed of light into the time and divide the distance by two that is the distance which is calculated now, this is the distance which is calculated now if i have the known coordinate here and the unknown coordinate there uh, what the total station can do is it can find out what is the vertical angle this is what we call as a vertical angle and what there will be a horizontal angle now this horizontal angle is usually calculated or usually measured from a reference direction so in surveying uh, the reference direction is usually the north okay so you can determine the north using your compass and you can fix the north using your compass or you can you know choose a reference direction for example the corner of a building or a, an electric, electric pole which is not vibrating too much but i would recommend that you choose the corner of a building because uh, that is much more stable so anyway so you have got these two angles so the horizontal angle and the vertical angle and then you got this distance also uh, okay so this distance suppose that this distance is l so definitely what will happen is if this you if you know that this is theta so automatically the z coordinate becomes l sine theta all right and similarly you are going to project this to the x y plane and you will get l cos theta and then you are going to produce uh, project this into the x axis and project this into the y axis so that you will get of course l cos theta sine phi and l cos theta cos phi as the x and y coordinates and uh, in this way the total station will be able to calculate what are the x and y and z coordinates but in addition what has what is there is the total station is usually placed at a stand above you know <coughs> so usually this uh, you know total station will be placed on a tripod like this and you place the instrument there and then you will find you will fire the laser beam this is how it is so you have to give to the total station the height of the instrument you have to you also you need a reflector there now this reflector this reflecting arrangement that we have uh, typically uh, 
it consists of a prism. It can also work in a reflector in this mode, but usually you will use the prism. So, uh, the, this kind of prism is uh, what we call as a retro reflecting. What is retro about this uh, thing? Uh, uh, retro means old. Okay. Retro reflecting means it will send back the source beam into the same place where it started from. So, if it if I if I start the my beam from here, point it here, the retro reflecting prism will cause the beam to be reflected back into the same point. Okay, so in this way, this is the retro reflecting prism mode. Whereas a reflector, suppose for example you are using a reflectorless mode, so it will depend upon the properties of the surface whether the reflected light will reach back or not. Of course, so if, if suppose for example the surface is absorbing all the radiation, electromagnetic radiation, it will not be able to, uh, what do you call it, uh, you know, reach back to where the target is, where the, where the measuring device is. Okay, fine. So, the total station will be able to, you know, measure the distance, the sloping distance that we call as sloping distance, the horizontal angle and the vertical angle, and then using these horizontal angle and vertical angle, and the instrument height as well as the retro reflecting prism is placed at a height. So using these values, it will be able to compute its own coordinates. So this is how the total station works. Now you can use the total station and integrate the total station this coordinate, which is which you feed into the total station this coordinate, which you feed into the total station. It can be what we call as a GPS coordinate. Now you can procure the coordinates from the GPS and put it inside the total station. And you can give the reference direction using two coordinates. So, okay, you can express, uh, you can establish the bearing of the line, and based on that, you will get coordinates on world coordinates in the world coordinate system. Now, you, if you get these coordinates, what you can basically do is, you know, take all the coordinates and take it to Google Earth. So, you can actually do uh, the entire survey using uh, the Google Earth system. Okay. Uh, Google Earth coordinate system. So you can capture all the coordinates in GPS uh, coordinate system and then take it to Google Earth and you can create a map which will be on Google Earth. Uh, Google Earth. Uh, so you can create the map using uh, what we call as you can create the map using QGIS, the quantum GIS platform and you can actually create the map using other uh, GIS platforms like ArcGIS mapping for grass GIS or whatever it is, those mapping platforms exist. Okay, so this is how what we can do.